The dramatization you are about to see is based on an actual, investigated, and documented case history of psychic phenomena. It is the next step beyond. A perfectly routine appendectomy. And the patient carried to it has come through the operation in perfect shape. However... Doctor, we have an arrest. Crash card. Suddenly, and quite unaccountably, Carrie DeWitt has died. Poor old silver in the case. Doctor, we have a heartbeat. It's alive. again in a manner of speaking for unfortunately due to the length of time that his brain was deprived of oxygen the prognosis for the now comatose carry to wit is at best a living death it's a future without consciousness life life is a vegetable but the inexplicable events of this case history have just begun the real surprises I had. change forgive me doctor but after 10 days you're right i'll make arrangements to have him transferred to a terminal rest home hi al how'd it go um something wrong I'm not sure I can explain. Are there any complications? The important thing is, you seem fine now. Feel great. Love the test. Now, they show you to be in remarkable health, but after what you've been through, isn't there some place you'd like to visit? Yeah, there is some place that I've been thinking about quite a bit lately. Mr. DeWitt, how are you? Same deal like before, okay? Akaju is driver and guide par excellence. For Monsieur DeWitt, it's only 300 francs a day, okay? I'm sorry, I don't understand. Okay, okay, 250. Because, but only you, a good customer. I need a cab, but you got me confused with somebody else. Hello? I have a reservation. Monsieur DeWitt, bonjour. One 
when we received your reservation, we wondered if it was the same. I mean, you left so suddenly no, without no, no, bothering. No, 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 there's been a mistake. I have never been on this island before, okay? Perhaps it was someone else. Whatever you say, sir. like you, monsieur, and signs his name exactly as you do? Let me see the date. January the 4th. You checked in on the 4th and remained until... Um... You see, on January the 4th, I was in a hospital bed in Milwaukee. Of course, monsieur. No, no, no. You see, this could be serious, you see. Someone... I think I'd like the police called in on this. The police, monsieur? Are you sure you want the police to know you're back? I am not back. Monsieur, I'm just as you wish. That's fine. Okay? Uh, Pierre? The usual. And what would that be? Some names I forget, but never what a man drinks. Some names you forget? Like mine? Not yours. Mr. Kerry Jewett from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, USA. You're a slow learner, Jewett. If you're not out on an explain, I'll finish job. Monsieur DeWitt. Surprise me, as you do it. Who are you? Sir, you uh, don't remember me either, eh? I'm sorry. Very well, if you insist. Police Sergeant Renard, at your service. Perhaps you can be of some help to me. Perhaps, uh, perhaps uh, we can help each other, yes, ma'am. But uh, first things first. Are you uh, prepared to settle the rather large hotel bill you ran up on your last visit, or not? Hotel bill? <laughs> Still playing your game, eh? Look, I'm a reasonable man, but I don't like being taken advantage of. Oh, very well. In uh, that case, uh, you leave me no alternative. Uh, we should continue this discussion at uh, police headquarters. Settle the whole thing to our mutual satisfaction, Miss Oh, voila. Ah. Monsieur, look for yourself. The uh, world, the configuration. sets of fingerprints are the same. <laughs> Precisely. Look, I don't understand what's going on here, why, why you're doing this, but all I know is I don't... You are a stubborn man, monsieur. What I don't understand is what you hope to gain by this charade. I don't believe it, DeWitt. What? But you have the gall to come back here again. Look, I don't want to talk to anybody except somebody from the U.S. Consul. You uh, wish to be alone with Monsieur Messon? You're George Mason? Ah, I see. Amnesia. All right, assuming that this is legitimate, I'm a United States citizen, and you're supposed to protect me. I tried in January, but you wouldn't have any then. Now, the best advice I can give you is to leave Tahiti on the next available plane. You've embarrassed our nation quite enough, don't you think? 
Embarrassed? How? Please, Mr. DeWitt, this will get us nowhere. You are in French territory, subject to French law, and you are not welcome here. Look, I asked you a question. Sergeant Renaud said something about a hotel bill that I didn't pay? What else? The money the hotel advanced you on my authorization. The not inconsiderable damage you caused to property in your drunken brawl with Coco Bear in the open air market. Oh, I assume you're talking about the man who attacked me for no reason at all at the bar this afternoon? Has no one told him about Tieta? Who? Tieta. Tieta. Well, what do you know? We finally found something he remembers. No, it's not that I... The name, Tiara. I congratulate you on your performance, DeWitt, but it's a waste of all our time. If you're not out of Tahiti on the morning flight, don't bother to call me again. Good day, Mr. DeWitt. Tiara. Tell me about it. I surprise myself, monsieur, but I find I almost... almost believe you do not remember. Is it really amnesia? Who is she? Tia? Is the sister of Coco, of course. Monsieur, if you are prepared to make full restitution. Tia Aubert. Tell me, what about him? If you really do not remember. No. No. There are some things it is better not to know. Come, monsieur. I will drive you back to your hotel. You can make whatever arrangements you wish. Look, I'll pay you whatever it is you say that I owe. Only don't leave me like this. I have to know. Please, Sergeant. Very well. The Aubers are one of the island's oldest and proudest families. When you arrived here last January, Tiara was engaged to be married to the son of the Chancellor. It was to be a union of two great families. But what does that have to do with anything? Well, evidently, it was not the love match everyone had assumed. Or when she met you. <laughs> Are you telling me we were lovers? Oh, it was a great scandal. The wedding plans were forgotten. The family finally accepting what they knew to be inevitable. And then you... I what? Disappeared. Vanished. Leaving her to bear the heartbreak and the shame alone. And is that what this is all supposed to be about? Not quite. She became a recluse, refusing to be consoled by anyone or anything.
Madame Mauvois. I didn't know. I had no way of knowing. Believe me, if I could have prevented this, I... You're asking me to forgive you? Only to permit me to help in some way. It is far too late for that, monsieur. She's gone? Not yet, monsieur. No thanks to you. But mercifully, she's beyond pain now. May I see her? Only for his sake. She seems to be waiting. How could he possibly have been here before? And in a coma, in a hospital bed, 6,000 miles away, at one and the same time. The scientists, whose specialty is psychic phenomena, call it teleportation. And the particular case history upon which this story is based appeared in major newspapers throughout the entire world. But whatever the explanation, the fact is that Tiara Aubert did jump from Tahara a point brokenheartedly and smashed her body on these rocks just a few days before Carrie DeWitt's return. Barely remaining alive, waiting, it seemed, waiting to have one last look at him, one last moment before she mercifully and quietly died that night. This is the, the locket that Tiara was wearing that night. Probably it's just well that Carrie DeWitt does not have it.